Brains and digestive systems are linked just like all systems in the body are linked. But with the strange, tube-like body shape of the giant squid, these two systems need to be a bit closer than they'd like. When you're a squishy Lovecraftian toilet paper tube at the bottom of the ocean, you've got to play some organ Tetris to fit everything where it's supposed to be. But sometimes literally threading the gastrointestinal needle is how you get by here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I am Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie and Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, to Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, Richard Kaspar, Lottie, Aubrey, and... Gray Hughes. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about the grumpiest cephalopod in the sea, but more on that later. I would be grumpy too. If, if I would. Were, if you were O oh, and a million against uh, a big whale. The same big whale? Yeah. <laughs> that would be rough. But there's also other reasons why I'd be grumpy as a cephalopod in general, but I like cephalopods. That was the we the first the, our very first episode was the Humboldt Humboldt squid. And now we're finally yeah. coming to this coming full circle. Which we're getting to the big one. Yeah. The big one. We are talking about the big squid. <laughs> the giant squid. The l- the large squid. Yeah. Yeah. This elusive creature of the deep surpassed only by the colossal squid the larger squid the should just be called the large and the larger largeness and um hard to findness yeah so uh, it seems that the colossal squid is heavier and girthier but the giant squid is still longer so huh which I'm sure we'll, we'll learn more about. But we're going to call the giant squid here Squid Games and Dead Ringer, which will make more sense later on. Oh, okay. Uh, would you like to know what science calls it? I would. It's in the kingdom you know, love, and are in the kingdom animalia. You're basically a squid at this point. Pretty much. But it's in the final mollusca, so immediately diverging from your family tree. You don't know uh, that. I- unless you're a snail. Uh, it's in the class Cephalopoda. Cephalopoda. Which means head feet. Yep. <laughs> it's SpongeBob. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's in the order. Oh, go, Psidae. Oogopsida. Uh, yeah, that works. Oe. Oe. Oogopsida. Well, maybe. In Latin, it's I feel like you super... just need to just go through each vowel. That there's no like diphthongs. You just go. Each one is its own syllable. Like Hawaii. Yeah, kind of. In Hawaiian, I think they do that most of the time. Uh, what does the computer man say? Oh, Gopsida. Oh. Um, it's in the super family. Archeteuthoidae. I can see you practiced this. Did I? (laughs) Archeteuthoidae. Yeah, that makes sense. And then it, the family is the exact same thing, but you flip those those last two vowels around. Architeuthidae. Archi- Archituthidae. Um, Archituthidae. 
Oh, yeah, okay. There's missing O. Wow, very funny. It's in it's in the genus Architeuthis. Mm-hmm. Architeuthis all day. <laughs> <laughs> or Architeuthis. He's the Captain um, America of the sea. <laughs> sea um, Rogers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the uh, binomial name for the species is Architeuthis dukes or do. Wow, I I mean, so what's coming up next is the is nitty gritty nomenclature, and I can't believe after th- saying Architeuthis in my head so many times, I did not think of Ar- Ar- Architeuthis all day. <laughs> Architeuthis okay. own horn. Um, it's time, so it's time for nitty gritty nomenclature, part of the show where I ask you what the binomial nomenclature means in English. So we have Architeuthis ducks. <laughs> D-U-X. <laughs> this is like ducks if you, if it was like a cool 90s duck. Like, um, uh, Who's the who, Howard the duck? the duck? Howard the Duck. There we go. Um, yeah, I guess he is a cool '90s duck. Yeah, he is, and I guess the Mighty Ducks are cool '90s ducks too. Very true. There was a lot of cool ducks in the '90s. Dark Wing Duck. Dark Wing Duck. The um, uh, Ducktales Duck Kids. Whatever. <laughs> the <laughs> Duck Kids. <laughs> I didn't um, watch it. <laughs> um, all right. So, what is Architeuthic? Uh, Architeuthis. D mean does it mean a leader of the squid b ultimate double beak c created tall arch or d deeply built arms I'm pretty proud of myself <laughs> on these yeah, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Give me the first two again. Uh, a is leader of the squid, and B is ultimate double beak. I'm going to go with deep built arms or whatever. Final answer. That is incorrect. Is it the other one that's created? Nope. It okay. is leader of the squid. Oh my gosh. So you... <laughs> Made three that make sense. What's the what's the ducks? Uh that just means chief, like leader or I, chief. And arche no also means me like leader, like an archetype, like the top. Um, that's so, what I thought. I thought like it was either archetype or architecture. So the build and the the create one. Kind of made sense to me. Yeah. And then two was in the other one. So those were the three that were not it. Yeah, I was thinking like... um, wh- The... Uh, redo? Like R-E-D-U-X? Or Redux? Mm-hmm. Or whatever? The, like, so create... Like, recreated or redone. Uh, or built, rebuilt. So... I, I was... I was... I was getting cheeky with this one but yep it's leader of the squid tooth this is just a word for squid it's actually chief leader of the squid if you want to be because ducks and archie both mean um leader or or chief which i they must have named before they realized there was a colossal squid um and also before they learned that cthulhu slumbers beneath the waves (laughs) Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's what that means that we've already gone over, I believe what, uh, when we went over cu- cuttlefish, um, what the, um, collective noun for a, a squid is. So that's why we're doing nitty gritty nomenclature. Um, would you like to know what it looks like? Sh- sure. It's a pretty classic looking squid. Classic. If you see squid. a squid, if you see somebody, if you, 
ask a child to draw a picture of a squid and they're going to be thinking of this. Um, the giant squid has a mantle, eight arms, and two elongated tentacles. So that makes it a decapod, right? Ten arms, ten legs. Well, the ten tentacles feet. the tentacles aren't arms, so it's a, o- it's an they're, octopod. They're just there. Um, an octopod. Arms. The arms are shorter and have suction cups along their entire length. Tentacles are long and only have suction cups on the ends. So that's the difference between arms and tentacles. Uh, but the arms and tentacles bear suction cups that are lined with sharp serrated rings, leaving circular scars on sperm whales that they give hugs to. Murder hugs. Uh, or attempted murder hugs. And they, ha- they have uh, really large eyes, perhaps the largest in the animal kingdom. Um, maybe next to the colossal squid or after the colossal squid and Cthulhu. Um, and that helps them see in low light conditions. And when they're in the deep, they can spot bioluminescence. Yeah. That's the largest eyes in, I mean the world, uh, obviously like uh, larger than us. So the animal kingdom is everything else, but, um, and they're, I mean, they're far from the largest animal, but they have larger eyes than, you know, blue whales. So Yeah, blue whales have those little bitty eyes. Because they don't need anything yeah, bigger. They, they live up in the, uh, where the light touches. They don't go down to... Uh, well, sperm whales have relatively small eyes, and they go down to the... That's true. The depths. But they, they um, use... Um, uh, other forms to find uh, other other methods to find their prey, not just sight. True. So let's talk about how big they are. Welcome to the beloved Mesurip segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show, the part of the show that's introduced by you when you send an audio of yourself, audio of yourself saying, singing, or um, clicking your beak in the deep. Mm. The words measure deep up into LD taxonomy. Clicking. Love it. <laughs> LDTaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new measure up intro this week, which means we get to hear from a squid. And Carlos is going to vainly try to guess what it is before he hears it. Oh, it's bold. It's going to be vain. Uh, okay, bring it on. Do you have a guest? A, a pre guess? Uh, no, because I can't, I can't think of any animated squid. So there's um, at least one that we all know and love. That's an octopus. But it's definitely not that. It's one. Davy Jones is an octopus. I was thinking of Squidward. Oh, oh yeah, Squidward. Forgot about him. Um, but it's not Squidward. Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Yeah, Who no idea. That? Old. Well, yeah, yeah. Give me the, uh, give me my multiple choice. I suppose. There's no multiple choice, but I will tell you this is a Hanna Barbera character. Yeah, no idea. Not not uh, have no uh, knowledge of that at all. That is Squidly Diddly. Squidly Diddly. And if you look at look at a picture of him, he looks like he's an octopus. He does not look like a squid at all. Looking up a picture now, you are a one hundred percent correct. He, <laughs> this is an octopus. <laughs> um, um, and it's funny because, like, I when you mentioned um, uh, Squidward, it didn't register to me that he's a squid i mean his name is squidward but he looks no- he looks nothing like a squid and he has the big bulbous head that a octopus has like he doesn't have the mantle and the fins and anything that gives him squid like uh, a squid like appearance so 
I, he just has he four. only has eight arms too. He doesn't have long tentacles. He only has six appendages. He has four feet and two arms. Oh. And he uses those feet in tandem. Arms? They're both they're like linked together because that's all they wanted to animate. <laughs> so. Yeah, he's about as uh, he he's about as much of a squid as you or you or I am. Which is we're in the kingdom Animalia. <laughs> <laughs> it is good character design though. Squidward is funny looking. It's good. He would look pretty um, horrifying if he looked if he was uh if if they did the um Little Mermaid live action to <laughs> him, where he just looks like a real squid. <laughs> And just it's anything he says, well, like "Hey, SpongeBob," is just this horrific clacking beak coming out of his <laughs> the, his bottom, clicking and squelching. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't think uh, SpongeBob would have been half as popular of a show if that had been the the his the character's foil. Uh, let's talk about their length. Their Usually between five meter or like five meters or sixteen feet long, but that's not very crazy. So they can grow up to be like thirty feet long, which including is pretty, the arms, including the arms. Yeah. So let's just go with sixteen feet. the uh, The average, the upper end of average, rather than the exceptional. So. How many giant squids go into the length of the Queen Anne's Revenge? Blackbeard's boat. And here's a crazy thing about Blackbeard's boat. Here's a hint. Queen Anne's Revenge is the legendary pirate ship that was captained by Edward Blackbeard Teach. In November 1717, it was captured by pirates while being used as a French slave trading vessel. It eventually ran aground off the coast of North Carolina in June of 1718. It was not Blackbeard's famous flagship ship for more than a year. But it, it did a lot of damage. <laughs> Probably. Um, also, like when I first read that, I'm like, yeah, pirates... You stopped those slave trading vessels, but then I kept reading and they just took the slaves and sold them and made a profit on them. So, Did you expect anything different? <laughs> no, but I hoped. That, that these, uh, that these every, Disney pi pirates of the, of the Caribbean would have hearts of gold and spend most of their time fighting uh, like cosmic horror monsters instead of actually doing piracy. The pirates of the real pirates of the Caribbean were more like um, closer, less like full on evil um, sea terrorists like they like we might think of them and more like um, mobsters. It's organized crime, may, like mobsters, but also like they principled mobsters where like they had a structure of democratic government on their ship and like uh ships and stuff it, they were a counterculture to the british royal navy which was very like captain's way or the highway and that's what made these pirates like go rogue they would mutiny and be like we're not doing it that way anymore we're, we're sick of it and so also, it's interesting so you, you have guns you Let's go take you the stuff You want them people. to be like Malcolm Reynolds and Firefly sailing the seas, doing odd jobs and doing the right thing, but uh, it's they're, they're human beings, it turns out. Yes, on the, on the outside of the law. You're not going to find very many great stories. <laughs> well, great stories, just not like heartwarming ones. Stories of good, of good deeds and heroism. Um. Yeah. Okay. So the Queen Anne's Revenge is one of those. I uh, man, I know it's got the lady on the front, but I don't know if it's a. Uh, 
It's I mean it's a big ship. Big uh, ga 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 galley galleon galleon. I don't know my ships very well. It's a frigate. Of course it is. Um, as though that means anything to me. Uh, there's uh, those boats are very long. I'm gonna say. Two hundred feet. Yes. No, one hundred and fifty feet. Um, that doesn't seem like a lot. No, I mean, yeah, that's a lot. And this, well, how how big did you say the squid was? Thirty three. Uh, sixteen feet. Or oh, we're going by sixteen. Yeah. Okay, I was seeing that recent estimates put the maximum size of the giant squid at forty three feet for females. Yeah, we're going with the upper end of average, not the like. They've found some specimen that are like really big. Yeah, they said somewhere 166 feet unsigned, un undocumented. That is sure. That is very, very big. Um, all right, so 16 feet. That's well, that's kind of underwhelming. But I'm gonna say 9.3 then. 9.3 squid laid mantle to tentacle. Uh, span the. Uh, the keel yeah the keel <laughs> of this uh, ship the correct answer is 6.4 oh it's a short ship the ship was 103 feet or 31.4 meters a short ship a short ship indeed and a sudden stop S so let's talk weight there are Around 275 kilograms or 606 pounds. You slap that 606 pounds on the deck and you really feel it shake. But uh, in the water, it's not so much of a problem. So how many giant squid go into the weight of the stern post that was recovered from the wreckage of the Queen Anne's Revenge? We're going full Blackbeard theme. Yeah, We're going Pirates. Because we're talking about the Kraken. Um, oh, I thought you were going to... I thought the other option was going um, Jules Verne. Because the most famous scene in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is them getting attacked by a bunch of giant squid. Oh, I've never actually seen seen or read the entirety of 20,000 Leagues. but Oh, but like if there's any cover art for the book or any of the movies, it's going to be somebody being attacked by a giant squid. <laughs> well, here's the hint. The wreck was discovered in 1996. I did not know this. When we were born, the world did not know the fate of the Queen Anne's Revenge. Other than that, it ran aground in, uh, off the coast of the U S. But um, it was discovered in 1996, and it took. It was discovered by a private research team. How awesome to work, at, like for this private. We're gonna go and like try to find a sunken ship. pirate ship. What is I'm this? sure there's tons. Uncharted. Well, the Mediterranean, man. That that. Imagine finding the stuff that's there. So many wars fought in a relatively small space. Like, there's got to be so much cool stuff down there that's just under layers and layers of sand and silt and, st and from, like, the Punic Wars and mm -hmm. all these naval battles, all these Phoenician trading ships that are probably at the bottom of that that, that we still haven't found. That would be great. Um... It was not until 2011, um, until 
uh, the, the, they collected enough evidence to confirm pretty without a shadow of a doubt that it was the Queen Anne's Revenge. Um, and the post that we're talking about, the Stern post, was recovered in twenty or 2007. Okay. I don't know what a stern post is. I had forgotten that you said it was a stern post and I was thinking the mast. So, um, that's, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and take my estimate. Stern post is the principal upright post at the stern of a vessel, usually serving to support the rudder. So the stern's the back. It's an up and down piece of wood, not a length of the ship piece of wood. And um, it's in the proper boat. It's in the ship. It's not like stick. It's not supporting any sails. I'm going to go with two. Two 600 pound squid go into the weight of this um, piece of wood. Final answer. Yep. The correct answer is 2.4. That is a nursing school victory. It must be, right? The post was 1,500 pounds. Yes. 83%. I don't, they also recovered the anchor, which is wherever that is. You got to go lay eyeballs on it because that's awesome. The anchor from the Queen Anne's Revenge. So cool. Um, but guess how heavy the anchor is. Standard anchor weight. Uh, uh, 50 pounds. No. Uh, well, actually, that's probably closer to standard anchor weight today. But uh, for, like, your regular boats. But it's a, a ton. We've talked about anchors before on the show, and it's a ton. Usually yeah, but, like, with, that was we were talking about anchors for, you know, cargo ships. Like, like the biggest vehicles mankind has ever made. Um, And, yeah, they were, like... Very very heavy, because they have to anchor the biggest vehicles mankind has ever made. All right, you got any fast facts That's before we get to the major I fact? I sure do. Giant squids um, use small fins on their mantle for movement and jet propulsion for speed. Um, and they. Uh, the giant squid and some other large squid species maintain neutral buoyancy in seawater, not with a swim bladder like fish, but by using an ammonium chloride solution, which is lighter than seawater and is found throughout their bodies. Incidentally, the solution is also said to taste like salty licorice and makes them bad for eating. If you're a human, unless you're a Scandinavian who who they love really salty licorice. So maybe they would like giant squid. Hmm. I don't like licorice, but I do like salt. So maybe those two <laughs> things balance themselves out. Um, like many cephalopods, they use jet propulsion to get around, which sounds crazy, but here's how it works. They pull in water uh, into a cavity in their mantle and then force it out quickly with muscular contractions so they're just like spitting out water and getting around like that they enjoy eating deep sea fish and other squids and they are probably solitary hunters they might even be cannibalistic but we're not sure because sometimes we find other giant squids in giant squid stomachs that could be like bits that are ripped off during fighting over other food or something or mating, who knows? They are infamously mysterious. We don't know how many there are in the world. Scientists have tried to guess based on the stomach contents of sperm whales how many giant squids there are. I guess the sperm whales are pretty faithful in what they eat, what their diet is, so faithful that, like, Oh, we find a sperm whale. We can look inside its stomach and see how many squid there are. Um, but I don't they know think how their you numbers project how many there are based on how many this uh, sperm whale is eaten. But no idea. You figure if this is the main food source of this animal, 
There has to be at least that many. But I'll tell you one thing. So they, they estimate their numbers to be well into the millions. But it like the estimation range is something like but somewhere between four and 130 million. What a humongous range. That is a humongous <laughs> range. But I guess it's like, it's better than not knowing anything. <laughs> but here's the thing. Like, hey, listen. Did you know that deep down in Davy Jones' locker, there are millions of potentially 40 foot long squid <laughs> <laughs> that just want to beak your face off. Yeah. No. This is the, this is why there is the lassophobia because there really are monsters down there and it turns out there's a whole lot of them. A 40 foot squid. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, it's it's like long and spindly because it's it's long tentacles. But I just like envision the length of my backyard, which is sixty feet, and the they're estimating that the the larger specimens are two thirds of that. Like that, that is very very big. But just the fact that even if it grabs you with one ten, one one arm, one tentacle. You're getting lacerated like crazy. Yeah. Because their little suckers are uh, sharp. And even without any of its arms or tentacles, it's still m- much longer than me by, <laughs> by uh, you know, seven inches. It's, it's, its mantle is around six feet, seven inches long. That's a basketball player right there. Insane. <laughs> Well, that's all I got. Do you have any big facts? I do. The major fact is an esophagus runs through it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So there are four major types of digestive systems for animals. We've never talked about this before, but the first is monogastric. This is, you know... Your typical mouth, esophagus, single-chambered stomach, intestines, and exit portal. Uh, Just a straight shot, start to finish. This is, you know, humans, uh, pigs, snakes, this kind of thing. Um, There's also the avian uh, digestive system, which includes a crop, which is a large... pouch at the end of the esophagus where food is stored um, before it moves on to the rest of the digestive digestive system and birds have uh, a lot of birds have control over this there's the ruminant digestive system which is cows uh, and deer and things like that where they have multi-chambered stomachs or they they because they eat so much high fiber low energy food they have to eat it, let it stew, throw it up into their mouths, chew it, knead it again, uh, and then actually digest it. So it's chewing the cud. And then there's the pseudo-ruminant, where the animal has the same diet as a ruminant, but they don't have the, the chambered stomach. Um, and that would be something like a horse. Uh, so the squid has a monogastric digestive system it's a straight shot from the mouth to the exits um like it's it's a it's like we humans have except it's not even a little bit like we humans have when you actually look at it um so they have these you know tubular bodies they're squid and this is squid in general but um it is interesting with the giant squid because of how big it is um, but they, the squid need to play some organ Tetris in order to get this all to work. Um, their brains, all squid, their brains are shaped like donuts. They are ring shaped. Hmm. Um, which is just so weird to me. It's like they're 
super colliders in there except there's there's not all that much happening in the brain of a squid <laughs> just two uh, particles smashing together that's it <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's it's just friends reruns in there that's pretty much all that's happening um they're so they, they most of their brain power goes to their optical lobes they do have like we said the largest eyes in the animal kingdom along with the colossal squid um but um they also have these little floating bone like structures in their brains called statoliths um and these allow the squid to know whether which way is up it's, it's a gravity huh. flotation um uh thing where they w when they're down where light doesn't really reach um or it reaches but it's so diffused that it can't really pick very much up they can know which way is the sur which way goes to the surface um but the the interesting thing is so they have these donut shaped these ring shaped brains and their esophagus starts at their mouth their beak which is at the center of where all their arms and tentacles meet um and it extends straight through the body through the ring of their brain so they just have if you look at it it looks like a cheeto being stuck through a cheerio it's <laughs> uh it's it's really bizarre um but the problem is for the squid uh is that there isn't a lot of wiggle room for this it is it's it's some of the if you look it up some of the um the diagrams make it look like there's like it's it's it, there's a lot of space for the esophagus the reality is is that it's pretty snug um so and a the a brain any one any brain is a very delicate organ so if the squid eats something too large and it passes through the the uh, the esophagus uh it could stretch the brain and cause brain damage and potentially kill the squid um and so this is why giant squid um well, squid in general, they they do they they will uh, tear their prey apart, but giant squid will also do this. Um, with, they'll use their the serrations on their on their suckers. They'll use their beaks, which man, why do they have parrot beaks? Why is that is so unsettling to me? <laughs> they could have like they could have like a sarlacc pit mouth with rows of teeth and that would be less unsettling to me than a beak like just a bird's beak in like there. imagine if there were just human lips in there like the, oh that was just so weird <laughs> <laughs> um so, so anyway they'll use their beak and they have a, a very rough tongue with these uh, serrations on it that will also rip they up swear a lot yeah, they swear. They are. They are sailors. They have a sailor's mouth. <laughs> um. Uh, did you, uh, do you beak your mother with that? That beak. <laughs> um. The uh. So they'll they'll use these tools to rip their food to shreds, um. As they and and into the smallest pieces possible, because if they take too large of a bite, they could accidentally kill themselves. Or at least cause permanent brain damage uh, as the it passes through their esophagus and through their ring brain. Um, and they they actually uh, they are theorized to not have to eat very very often uh, that their metabolism is is low um, and they can eat just once every several days or even up to uh, a week or more. Um, which makes a little bit more s I mean if there's so many of these guys and they're so big you think like how do they how do how do they exhibit this deep sea gigantism if there isn't enough food yes the that would be the big problem with living at the bottom of the ocean is that uh food would be f 
well, meals would be few and far between. Um, and the reality is that they can, they can just go for a long time, um, without eating. And also they can eat things very slowly. So they'll kill their prey, um, or at least disable it. Um, this fish or what, or other, I guess, other squid. Um, and they will just kind of eat off of it for days at a time. Um, because they can't eat too fast, otherwise they'll die. <laughs> so there's there's also that. They can't they can't not eat and they can't eat too fast. I mean that's that's kind of that's life, right? You have to find a balance. Why does the brain have to circumnavigate the esophagus? Because there it wouldn't fit anywhere else. God said when he created the squid, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know. <laughs> It's just a trick that God was like, check this out. Well, it's like for an octopus, the brain kind of sits back in this pouch. I, it's not very hydrodynamic where the squid is. is. And in order to be hydrodynamic, the brain can't be in this big bulbous pouch somewhere on, the, on it, it. Maybe it's for perfect symmetry of weight. Maybe, but mo- it doesn't need to be very s- smart. So it has a, a nice round, s- smooth brain, <laughs> like a koala. Yeah, you, can't, you can't argue with them. They just get caught in circular thinking. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just nothing but <laughs> circular reasoning with these guys. Uh <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, and really it's a major fact for, for squid in general, but I, I wanted to talk about the giant squid because they haunt my dreams. They are aliens for sure. Yeah. The Humboldt squid is scary because they're aggressive, but the giant squid is scary because it's, it's a big boy. It's giant. It's the large one. And for all we know about it, it's also aggressive. It could also be aggressive, yes. It takes on sperm whales and loses pretty much every time, but um, it still does. <laughs> and that's that's impressive. That takes gumption. And that's all I got. That's all I got. All right, so for you out there in Podcastia, find some food. Beak it real good. And don't eat big bites or you'll get big brain hurts like the giant squid here in Life, Death, and Taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. <laughs> what a I sent you a picture of a very scary looking colossal squid.